Welcome back to another edition of the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. We are your host. He's a stallion. I am the enforcer. And this week, we are joined by a very special guest, Masha Slamovich, a.k.a. Russian Dynamite, who, if you've watched wrestling at all in the year 2021, you have seen her in some form or another because she might be the most active wrestler on the planet. Uh, Masha, thank you so much for joining the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. You have been everywhere in 2021 here's a little spoiler for everybody listening we had spoke a couple months ago i think it was like in april and we could just not make it work for one reason or another and i think that was good because since april like you've seemed like you've wrestled the who's who of the wrestling world i mean i'm talking diana perrazzo uh kimberly just weekend after weekend so how how has your 2021 been and what like it's such an amazing run that you're on right now. Um, how, how do you handle all of that? My 2021 has been pretty good, you know. Um, it started off a little rocky because I obviously had to leave Japan and I didn't want to. Um, and I really wasn't sure what I was coming into returning back to the United States in the middle of what was still like a strange pandemic time at the end of January. Um, you know, so I came back at Fight Forever, and ever since that weekend, it's just been pedal to the metal. I think I have, like, one Saturday off since I've been back. I'm just going, going, and I could not be happier. Like, the busier I am, the happier I am. Sure, and, the, you know, the busier you are, you're on the tip of people's tongues, you know, you're on a, a ton of great promotions beyond wrestling, WWR. Um, you mentioned you came back in the middle of the pandemic, but even, you know, during 2020, you were still active d- despite the uh, world's insanity. You were still keeping active. How did you manage to do that? Well, I was lucky enough to, um, at the end of 2019, come to an agreement with Marvelous Pro Wrestling to do a three-month tour in Japan. And I went over there and in the middle of March, I think around like the 22nd, uh, unrelated to the pandemic, they asked me to stay and, you know, to continue wrestling, continue training. They thought it would be a beneficial uh, relationship for the both of us. So I agreed. And obviously like 10 days later, all hell broke loose and like the pandemic shut down the world, you know, so I, I, I was not about to come back to New York City and just sit in my house, you know, so I thought I'm going to stay in this dojo and I'm going to train and I'm going to live here for as long as it takes. I even said to Delmi jokingly, I was like, oh, if I have to stay here for a year, I will. And then that's exactly (laughs) what ended up happening. That's so your home base right now is New York City. Yes. Now I'm based out of New York City. Awesome. And you grew up in Russia, right? I grew up going back and forth between New York and Moscow. What was, a, what is the wrestling, not even the scene, but like the, the culture of professional wrestling like in Russia? Because I know Russia is super heavy into combat sports, um, sambo, jiu-jitsu, mixed martial arts. Is professional wrestling as popular? It, um, it was never like as popular as it was in America. Um, so even when I would see wrestling on TV, it would, it would be like kind of hard to find over there I guess uh at least that was my experience with it and of course I'd like we have what like three or four um indie wrestling companies across the whole nation so pro wrestling oh boy um pro wrestling definitely is not as popular as other things but it's actually definitely gaining a lot more popularity with places like IWF Moscow um like doing a so so good for themselves places like North um North Star Wrestling, I believe it was, and other promotions as well. Were you able to, I know you said you're going back and forth, were you able to keep tabs, or were you even a fan of professional wrestling growing up? I was. I was definitely a fan of pro wrestling from a really, really young age. Um, I saw wrestling on TV, and I just fell in love with it. You know, after like five minutes, I'm like, yep, this is what I'm going to do in life. And I just never let go of that. What, um, was it WWF? It was, Yeah. But yeah, the, like I wasn't aware that we had indie wrestling until like 2018. And I finally got to wrestle in my hometown in 2019 for IWF. So that was a really cool experience. Wow. What age were you when you came over to New York? I'm sorry, what? Uh, how old were you when you came over to New York? So I was actually born in New York, but oh. I would just go back and forth all the time. So, but it, but it kind of worked out on the legal end. So 
That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I can, New York is definitely, uh, um, we're both from New York as well. So New York, you know, the independent wrestling scene in the tri-state area is, I mean, right up there with, you know, California, like the hottest in the country. Um, you know, we have, uh, one of my favorites beyond wrestling WWR over here, which you are a main stay at. So, uh, you know, it, it's a great place to be and easy to travel, I guess is the best part. So, well, now it's easy to travel. It wasn't for the last year or so. Uh, that is the best part. That is probably the only reason that I haven't left New York city is because it's just such a convenient hub to live in, um, travel wise. And I'm really glad that you brought up Beyond Wrestling because we actually just announced we only have 13 tickets left for American Rana 21. So hopefully we'll get those sold out by the end of the day and be sold out on August 22nd. Yeah, and the yeah, new... 23rd, yeah. 22nd. It's, it's going to be on IWTV. Make sure you watch. But it's you and legit Layla Hirsch versus Kimberly and Jordan Grace, which is just, I mean, four of the best women's wrestlers in the, wrestlers in the world right now. And that's, I think, the only match they have announced aside from Team Tremendous in the No DQ match and the uh, Matt, uh, Matt Cardona at the show. So I think this will be probably the biggest American Rana slash Beyond Wrestling show ever. Is that fair to say? I, I do think we're we're going to pull out some stops this year, man. Yeah, and it's a WWR Amer um, Beyond Wrestling Super Show. I think they're back-to-back -back shows. So yeah, it's it is a doubleheader. WWR will run right um, earlier in the day. I don't want to say right before Beyond, uh, but at some point during the day, they will run earlier. And 13 tickets left, so congratulations to uh, Beyond Wrestling. I'm sure it's 109 right now on uh, July 21st. Don't worry, you'll be sold out by then. So that's uh, that, that's a great house. Hopefully by the 22nd we'll be sold out or like whatever this airs, there better be yeah. zero tickets left. Listen, 13 tickets left. Somebody better move on it. It's going to be a great show and beyond so good. You know, they have a lot of surprises. They have such great homegrown talent and they bring in such good talent. So, you know, if you're there, for go for the weekend, go to both shows, support WWR because uh, Women's Wrestling Revolution – before the, the the women's revolution and the divas revolution, all that stuff, WWR has been putting on shows forever. Very similar to um, to Shine and a Shimmer, a promotion where you know um, women have a chance to uh, solidify themselves, and it's it's a consistent product. And again, they have that homegrown talent, and they bring in the veterans. WWR is really a great show. I can definitely second that. Um, it's a great time working there, and y'all should all be watching it. Yeah, and the environment's so cool. Listen, everybody's up on the... I don't know if they're going to be up on the ring now. I don't know what the rules are going to be with the COVID and stuff like um, that. Well, the COVID restrictions are, have, have like been lifting recently, all of them. So Massachusetts, as far as I know, is fully open. And we've had the last couple of shows, people are running up all the way up to the ring. So That's awesome. And we hope it stays that way. If there's going to be a Lambda, Delta, some kind of bullshit variant with COVID, whatever is going to happen in the future. But let's, uh, let's stay positive. So I know you said you were a fan of wrestling growing up. When did you decide, or when did you, should I say, start training? Did you start training in New York, or did you start training in Russia? I started training in New York. Uh, I was trained originally by Johnny Rods in, in Brooklyn. And yeah, that's where I spent the first two years of my career, just training. Johnny Rods, famous trainer to Taz, I think Will Ferrara, some of the toughest, you know, Johnny Rods will go down as one of the most, uh, is it safe to say old school trainers that there is? Definitely, definitely very old school. That's awesome. Um, how long after you said your first two years, how long into that training did you have your first match? So as I started training at 16, I wasn't able to wrestle in the state of New York until I was 18. Um, so by the time that I was about to turn 18 and graduate high school simultaneously, um, Mar Johnny Rods was at the time working with people from Japan and they scouted me and pretty much I had like a, what do you call it, an exhibition match. And then I got sent off to Japan. So I turned 18 and then two weeks later I had my debut with Reina Pro Wrestling. Wow. And since then, I mean, like you've literally been everywhere and you've also wrestled in like every type of match. Recently, I saw you at um, ICW Pit Fighter against Kimberly in the pit. And then a couple of days later against uh, Red Death, Daniel Garcia in a pure rules match. So you, you, you like run the gamut of everything that is out there. What if you had your choice, what would you prefer? The death match style or in the pit against like the pure rules? Well, I, I know you, you have a lot of combat sports training as well. So what, what comes easiest to you and what do you enjoy the most? You know, at the, at the root of it all, I'm a pro wrestler and, 
everything I do was meant to be, you know, done in a ring and it's an art form. It's the greatest sport in the world, in my opinion, you know, there's, I can go on and on about how great pro wrestling is and the passion of pro wrestling. So, and, you know, I really enjoy working the pure rule style. I don't get to do that too often. Um, my style is a little bit more high paced and Japanese uh, influenced, but I really, really enjoy working pure rules matches. And I hope I have more of them in the future. Um, but also not opposed to hitting somebody over the head with a chair and a trash can. So, <laughs> yeah, um, that pure rules match you had with Daniel Garcia, I think it was uh, for VXS uh, recently, was one of my favorite matches on the show, period. I, I think that was. I don't want to say a coming out party, but it was just a, it was so entertaining. It was such a good match. And you do have, um, do you train jujitsu? Do you, uh, what kind of combat sports do you train? I do train jujitsu. And um, I did previously in the past have some catch wrestling training. Gotcha. And I say that loosely because Johnny Rod, so it's not formal training, but it's old school training. And I'll, I'm still going to take that. Right. It's, I'm going to hook you. You got to get out of, you know, that kind of thing. Exactly. Right? There you have it. Gotcha. That's awesome. Uh, do you train jiu-jitsu? you train in the gi or without the gi? I do both. Oh, I hate the gi. I've been training jiu-jitsu for, for many, many years. I think training with the gi, if you're going to train, you have to start with the gi because you can't go no gi to gi because everything, it's a completely different world. So. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I started, uh, my first class was obviously in the gi and I wanted to do gi, but I also, uh, apparently they had somebody like watch and like see if I was good enough for no gi on the first day because I asked about it. And they're like, all right, you can do no gi. I'm like, yeah, so I'll go to um, Renzo's in Manhattan, the Gracie Academy, and uh, wow. I'll just go, like, I'll start the day. I'll do 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in gi, and then I'll do 7.30 to 8.30 no gi, and that's usually my favorite way to train. That's awesome. How often do you get to train? Uh, like two to three times a week. I usually try to just come in the evenings when the classes are back-to-back -back so that I can do a double class every time. That's maximize the minutes, right? That that's the uh, that's the best way to go. I know we were talking about um, you know beyond wrestling coming up. I also want to talk about um, GSW Global Syndicate Wrestling. Uh, you have some awesome stuff coming up with them. They have the Global Wrestling Festival. I think it's a uh, it's a who do you have on that show? I know that is coming up uh, August thirteenth and fourteenth, I believe. Global Syndicate Wrestling. No, that's twentieth uh, and twenty first. Okay. Um, and we're having actually double header shows. We're having GSW High Voltage on both days before, and then we're having Global Festival Night One and Two after those shows. Um, on High Voltage, actually, I don't know if it's been announced, but I'm announcing it right now because it'll be out on Twitter by the by this, anyways. Uh, it's gonna be me and Delmi Exo finally in a singles match. Um, wow. And it's funny because me and Delmi have wrestled in tag matches here at Battle Cup Pro. We've wrestled in six man and triple threats uh, in Japan, but we've never had a singles match. So this is going to be a really exciting uh, matchup. That's awesome. And actually, we, we literally just had Delmi on last week. So it, it's what a coincidence. I don't want to say it's because of us, but we have something to do with it. So that's great. Um, and we had uh, our friend uh, BT, the ring announcer for, um, for GSW. He's really been touting. That's another kind of homegrown promotion where – they, they have been together, what, maybe a year, and the amount of talent on those shows is just unbelievable. So I'm definitely going to be looking forward to that, which you can catch on Fight TV if anybody's interested. So Delmi XO, Masha Slamovich, one-on-one -on -one, uh, at GSW coming up. That's a fantastic um, announcement. We really appreciate that. And then again, we have the American Rana coming up. Um, you're, I mean, it's, it's not even August, and your card is stacked. What else do you have coming up the month of August? Oh boy, let me let me take a gander at my calendar here because it is going to be a full month. So obviously we have Beyond Wrestling on the 5th, which has been announced, which will be myself and Megan Vine, the Megasis. Um, that will be Beyond Wrestling on the 5th of August. On the 7th of August, I am returning to VXS. Um, so that is also going to be on Fight TV, I believe. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, we also had WAW1 announced where I'll be facing Savannah Evans on August 13th. Let's see what else. Oh, yes. Um, I'm making my return to Camp Leapfrog on August 8th. And that will be the matchups for that will be announced shortly. And let's see what else. Oh, yes. And, of course, American Rana. We spoke about that. And then there's a couple of other things 
but those hopefully will be announced by the time this airs but i cannot speak on that yet okay fair enough fair enough uh i also know you are a uh you're a big fan of japanese professional wrestling right of course you posted a highlight the other day. I think it was of Shinya Hashimoto. Uh, I love Shinya Hashimoto. I think he's one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time. Um, how did you get into Japanese? Was that something you, you know, as you got older and you appreciated the art? Or was that something you first found it when you were young and you were like, holy shit, I have to watch this? And so when I was younger, I was definitely watching more WWE. And I ventured into like older WWE stuff. So I would just, you know, try to go as far back um with wwe and when i discovered indie wrestling i pretty much like immediately discovered czw so (laughs) what a way to start right so i started watching that and i was really into it and i saw the japanese influence mainly from some of my favorites like danny havoc and that pretty much led me down a rabbit hole of like japanese wrestling and being super like obsessed with like early 2000s no is my favorite my absolute favorite that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, now, thankfully with the, the I don't want to say the invention of the internet, like I'm some 70 year old dude, but like, you know, now you could find really anything you want on YouTube and it's so easy to go back, you know, instead of like worrying about tape trading and reading in magazines, you're like, oh, I want to watch the best of uh, all Japan in 1999. It's like, okay, you know, you press a button and you click. So right. that's really cool. But I am actually pretty upset because I was talking about this yesterday in the airport that I remember when I was a kid, you'd walk into like fucking Muse Daily and they would have like Pro Wrestling Illustrated and WWE Magazine. And you don't see that anymore. And that just makes my heart hurt. It's so funny you said that. I'm going to grab it. They have, Joe got us two copies of these. This is the Wrestling Almanac, the Inside the Ropes. It came out this year. Oh, um, I didn't know. know I didn't know that existed. And because growing up, I would also read PWI and I would do the Almanac and they haven't uh, come out with one since like 05. So they came out with this. It's got literally everything. Uh, it is, uh, there's something about like hard copy and like, you know, like you said, like reading uh, a magazine that is so, uh, I don't know, therapeutic and right now, like everything's on the internet. I don't want to be on my phone all the time. I want to read a magazine. I want to read yeah. a book like that Same. So. like i don't like looking into all that blue light not good for you <laughs> exactly plus like once you like you look at something and it's gone you know you scroll and it's gone you have something like this and it's here forever so i mean inside the ropes isn't sponsoring us even though they should but the inside the ropes uh wrestling almanac 2021 it's super cool um also speaking of I mean, kind of uh we're talking uh retro stuff here you're we talked recently uh, a couple weeks ago uh i don't even know if you know it was me on instagram about 80s horror movies i was the one that, that sent you, you. That was me, yeah. I was like, I wonder who that is. <laughs> that, that was me. I'm a huge 80s horror movie guy. So are, did you get a chance to watch it? I think I sent, it was uh, Sorority Babes yes. and Slimeball Ballerama. Yeah, did you watch yeah, it? I watched it, thoroughly enjoyed it. I was like, this is right up my alley. It is, <laughs> it is so bad. It is good. Um, I know, I love, it's like, I'm, you got to watch the Russian one. It's called V, V-I-Y. It's, okay. it's, 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 I think it's like the 70s though, but still, it's so terrible. It's good. I'm adding it to my list right now. I have a list of things to go through. What was your, all right. So what's your favorite eighties horror movie then? I mean, fucking, what do you call it? Damn it. Um, okay. The Freddy, the one of the claws, Freddy. Oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. Okay. I was like, you know, when you say the name of song and you forget every song I've ever listened to, I forgot every movie I ever watched just now. It's okay. When you think like, it never, like you never have it when you need it, right? No. Nightmare on Elm Street is good. So are you, uh, are you like a Friday the 13th person, a Nightmare on Elm Street person or a Halloween person or all three? Both all three. I'm like, why are you making me choose? It's a crime. All of them. It, it is. A, all right. So out of the three, which one's your favorite then? This is the, what kind of defines a person to me. I'm like at a tie between Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the the 13th. If I had to let Halloween go, I guess, like I'd let it go. But really, I suppose between either of those, they're both so good. Okay, fine. I'll go with Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm like, fuck. There's something, Freddy is funny, but it's also, I think the scariest thing is he can get you in your dreams, right? So that that adds like a whole layer that people don't appreciate and understand. So that a mind fuck. Yeah, that's even better. So, all right. So you are a Freddy person. That's good to know. Um, we know what's coming up for you. Also, I want to put over your pro wrestling tees. It's prowrestlingtees.com slash Masha Slamovich. You have some really awesome merchandise on there. And uh, pro wrestling tees is super cool. And they have, I think there's probably going to be a promo coming up soon. I have a feeling I heard some. I'm actually 
so glad you said that because by the time this airs there will be a new design out on pro wrestling tees and for the first time i will have physical shirts available for sale at shows with me and you'll be able to order from me directly that's and awesome up. so well, look out for that new design because y'all are gonna love this one if you're gonna be at american rana what you're saying is you're gonna have physical shirts there to sell hopefully they'll be there by then like i'm working on it immediately as soon as this hangs up i was working on it before and i'm gonna continue working on it Awesome. Well, like I said, everybody check out prowrestlingtees.com slash Masha Slamovich. You have some really cool designs up there, some totally different stuff. So we're uh, looking forward to that. And where can everybody follow you on social media? Y'all can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Masha Slamovich. And you guys can join me for all the fun and exclusive stuff on patreon.com at Masha Slamovich. I just dropped a new photo shoot and I have another photo shoot coming up this week. And listen, summertime is the best time to join my Patreon. And in August, we're having free uh, merchandise sent out to everybody. So come join us for all the freebies. Well, fun. Yeah, absolutely. What better time? Look forward to seeing you. Uh, VXS, Battleground, American Rana, anywhere you find independent wrestling this year, you're going to find uh, Masha Slamovich. Never know where you show up. You're going to wrestle the TNA you know, knockouts champion one night, you're going to wrestle Kimberly in a pit the other night. Who knows? The The world is your oyster. Masha Slamovich, Russian Dynamite. Thank you so much for joining the show today. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me and have a great day. Awesome. Take care, guys.